Hi, this is Rob Graham, Director of Training at LearningCraft, and today I want to take a few minutes and show you some other things we might be able to do with buttons using Adobe Flash. Now, in this case, what we really were thinking about doing is creating something that allows us to take the functionality that buttons offers us and use it in a slightly different way. Let me show you the example of what we'll be working on right now. And let's say I said, you know what I really need to do is I need to create an online catalog that tells people the kinds of training I can offer them. So by creating something that I can put into my web page, for example, this type of an object, and then have people interact with it, as you roll over each one of these areas, it gives me a little bit of information about what each course offers me. Okay, so it's a very simple thing to do, and this is all done, by the way, without any type of programming, which makes it even more enjoyable. And as you'll see, it's actually quite easy. To begin with, we have a kit that you can use for this, and if you're interested in following along at home, you can go and pick up the kit at www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash, in this case, you're looking for a file called catalog.zip. Now in this project, what it offers you is an opportunity to put together this catalog, as we see it here. And if you look in the library, we have a series of thumbnails which show us the packaging for each one of the software offerings, as well as a text block, which corresponds with each one of these, which explains what the benefits are and why you would want to be able to take this course. To begin with, we really need to do a little bit of work to take these graphics and convert them into something that we can interact with. So I'm going to start by going out here and arranging content onto my stage. In this case, I'm going to go and start with the action script box. I'll just pull it out here. As you can see, it's rather quite large. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Beyond Foundational Flash package, as well as the Camtasia training package, as well as the Foundational Flash. Okay, so we have these four items. Now, obviously, they're way too large for the purposes of fitting here under the stage, but one of the things we can do is we can resize these things so that they're all consistently sized and we'll be able to put them together. And to do that, if I click on each one of these, I can look down here in my properties window and it gives me some information about it. First of all, it tells me the width of the object I've selected in pixels, as well as the height of the object. And this will tell me the X position on the screen, as well as the Y position. So as you can see, it's off off the stage actually so everything's in negative numbers. Now, like I said, these are way too large for what we want to do, but if I click on this, I can go down into here and I can type in new criteria for width and height. However, before I do that, instead of going in and saying, okay, I need to figure out how wide this is going to be and how tall it's going to be, I can structure it so that when I put the width value in, the height value will automatically update based upon the original shape. And the way we do this is you see this little padlock right here? If you click on this, what this will allow you to do now is to link the values of width and height together. So if you change one, the other will change correspondingly. Now in this case, I'm going to knock this down to 125 pixels in size. And as you can see, it's now gotten a lot smaller. The nice thing is now I can very quickly go through and say 125 pixels, please. And uh, you as well. 125 pixels wide. And the height values will take care of themselves. And finally, 125. So now they're all much smaller, which is good news for us. It means they'll probably all fit on the stage. So I'm going to go and figure out, first of all, the order I want them to go in. And I'll start with the easiest ones. And we have Foundational Flash over here. That's an introductory Flash course. And then we have a Intermediate Foundational Flash, Beyond Foundational Flash. And then finally, there's an introduction to Foundational Action Script, learning about how to write programs in Flash. And I can go in here, and if I want, I can select all of these objects and go over to my Align Tools and just make sure that they're all aligned by their top edge. And the nice thing about this design, as you can see, it brings a nice consistent background, so it looks like they're all really sitting on the same plane, which is very handy for us. So now we have, in essence, four graphics that we've stuck up here. But that's not going to help us because in order for us to interact with these graphics, we need to make them into something we can interact with. And in this case, we want to convert these guys to buttons. Now, if you're unclear on how to create buttons in Flash, I encourage you to go look for some of the button basics programs that I've created that are sitting somewhere here on YouTube to help you to understand the fundamentals of buttons. We're going to be reviewing some of it, but this might help you to have a better understanding as we go into it. To create this into a button, for example, this object, I'm going to take the foundational Flash box, and I want to make it into something I can interact with. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to my Modify menu, and I'm going to select Convert to Symbol. Now it gives us an option of various things we can convert to. In this case, I say I want to take this and I want to make it into a button. 
and I will just call this, in this case, FF button. That stands for Foundational Flash. And there it is. And I click OK. Now you'll notice what has changed here is this object now has a bounding box around it compared to a gray outline, as these do. And this is telling me that it has also been added to my library and is now being saved as a symbol. In order to create a button, what I need to do is double click on this guy and go down into its timeline. Now what this is showing me is what the upstate of the button is, and that's the original artwork that I created. Now we can always go in and change that if we want, but in this case it's really going to be perfect because this is what we want to have on our web page when nobody's interacting with the button. We also have an overstate, and an overstate in this case will be the artwork that is changed to in the event that someone rolls their mouse over this area. And the downstate, likewise, if somebody were to press their mouse button down on the area that represents the button, then we could have it changed to something else as well. Now to begin with, I want to use the graphic that we're using for the up portion of the button as a part of the over and down states as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the overstate, and if I right click on this frame here, I can go and select insert keyframe. Now what this does is it goes back to the last keyframe in the timeline and it copies it to the new position. So all I've really done is taken this graphic of the box and I've copied a, a version here to the overstate. Now for this example, what I really want to do is I want to have something that happens when the user rolls over the button. I don't really need to have any type of state change to the object itself. It can sit here and you're going to understand as you roll over each one of these that something's changing because we're going to have different information appearing. So I really can use the same up over and down states all the way throughout. Let me go to the down state here. And once again, if I don't want to go and right click it and select insert keyframe, I can get the same results by pressing my F6 key. So it goes. Now up, over, and down look a lot alike. And you know what? The hit state for this particular button, I want it to be pretty much the bounding area that represents the button right now. So I'm going to go and if I hit F6 one more time, now we're going to be using the parameters of this square to determine where the outline of the button is. So that's fine for what I'm doing. Now there's one more thing we do want to do in here, and that is I want to go in here and I want to make sure that we have additional content that will appear here, because basically, as we roll over each one of these, I have some text that I want to have appear down here. So to do this, I'm going to go into my button, and believe it or not, I'm going to create a brand new layer. Now it's just like the same timeline we might use if we were going out and creating something on our main timeline and not in the button. I can add layers and have additional information. And in this case, what I'm looking to do is when the user rolls over this button, I want something to pop up here to tell them about the course. And that will be the text tags that I have over here. In order for me to place this in to the overstate here, I'm going to first of all put in a blank keyframe, which I can do by either right-clicking and selecting Insert Frame, or I can go in and press the F7 key, which will do the same thing. And when this blank keyframe is in place, it tells me that I, in essence, can add something to that frame. So in this case, I'm going to go here and I'm going to select the text that I have for foundational flash, which is FF text, and I'm going to drag it into position. Now once again, the important thing to understand is that the different criteria that are going to be met depending upon what the actions of the end user are, are going to be reflected in this timeline. If this program is running and nobody's interacting with the button, then the playback head is going to sit right here, and what you're going to see is just this button. However, if the user were to roll their mouse over this button area, then what you're going to see is the elements that appear here in the overstate. And the same thing holds true for down. Now in this case, we're only going to have rollover, so down's not going to make much sense to us, so we can copy it accordingly. But if we wanted to change the state, if the user clicked down on their mouse button, we could do that here as well. And I'm going to go and place the content right there. So there we go. And once I'm all set, it's really just a matter of going and saying, OK, I'm done. Now there's one thing we will do here. We really only want to have the text appear as the over and down states. For the hit state, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to press F7 to put in a blank keyframe. That means that the hit state is still going to be just this area. If we were to leave this in here, then anytime anyone rolled over this area as well, it would think it was part of the button and it would end up highlighting itself. Okay, so there we go. Fairly straightforward. I'm going to go back to scene one. And now we can go and test this button to see how well it works. And I can go in here and say, Enable Simple Buttons. And now, if I go and click or roll over this guy, then what happens is when it goes to its overstate, it also ends up showing off the text that we've placed in that frame as well. See? Feel free to give that a try. 
And as always, if there's anything those of us at LearningCraft can do to help you out with training for multimedia development, application training, or online marketing, please let us know. We're happy to talk to you anytime. You can reach us on the web at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Have fun with it, and I hope to see you real soon.